Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do um, part two to Revelation, the 13th chapter, as in part one. Uh, we got all the way to the 10th verse, um, you know, which in this chapter, John is describing the beast system, you know, uh, that will lead to the return of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right. Esau's power structure. Um, and we talked about how Rome, the dragon, gave the beast system its power and authority and we went into some examples of how Rome um, has been rebirthed into the earth through the very system we're living in, all right, which um, we know the Western Roman Empire fell, and then we know we had the uh, Renaissance period, and, you know, we went into how, you know, that very system forwarded, you know, blasphemy and the spiritual demon Satan was able to operate through the biblical Edomites to get to the point where he's going to set up a world order. <clears throat> it would be through the power and authority given to Esau via the Roman Empire, which Rome still runs the earth today. Some ways, you know, outright and in a lot of ways in secret. Now. As John described what this, you know, beast would do and, you know, using the authority of Rome, you know, conquering the nations, blaspheming, you know, the, the name of the Lord, making war with the saints, you know, being worshipped. All right. John, the revelator here in verse nine and ten says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. All right. So John, a revelator, you know, uh, wrote this down as a part of this vision, you know, to let the, the, the saints, the elect, all right, the church know, all right, because those who have ears to hear, you know, that's ultimately given from the heavenly father through Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, real quick, Proverbs 20, and here we go. Proverbs 20 and 12. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord have made even both of them. And that's in a carnal sense, all right? And that's in a spiritual sense, okay? And um, <clears throat> Yahweh Shai himself. You know, many of his sayings, he said, if you can receive it, all right, or if you have ears to hear, all right, basically speaking unto those who, who ultimately it's meant for, because the spirit of truth ain't open up to everyone. You see, the true tabernacle of David, the true, all right, uh, Israelites, the remnant, the elect are crying for a kingdom, Okay, crying for the throne of David to be set up in the earth for eternity, which entails, you know, the, our enemies being our footstool. And our main enemy is Esau Edom. And John is letting us know, <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 this beast system is going to do all of this, but the end result is his captivity. As a matter of fact, let's get Lamentations, the uh, fourth chapter. Lamentations 4 and 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwelleth in the land of Uz. The cup shall also pass through unto thee. Okay, thou shalt be uh, drunken, thou shalt make thyself naked. And that's what's happening to you Edomites now. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins, okay? Also, let's get uh, Psalms 137, okay? <clears throat> Psalms 
Psalms 137 and 7. Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. All right. And this is what the Edomites did to us in the Babylonian captivity. All right. They helped to persecute us. They wanted us destroyed. They helped the uh, the, the the Babylonians. Okay, to uh, take us down, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. So, remembering Edom's sins and all that they've done. All right, which this race it race it isn't just tied to one, you know, uh, situation. They've always historically, and prophetically, have been you know at the forefront of trying to destroy us. When we left out of Egypt, uh, the Amalekites were the first nation to attack us. They've always wanted us destroyed. All right. But this is speaking of, you know, a prophecy of what will happen, you know, at the time of the Neo-Babylonian Empire as well. So, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. Okay, so this is a future prophecy of the daughter of Babylon, okay, which is associated with Edom paying for their sins. This is what we, as the tabernacle of David, are patiently awaiting, you see, to be ultimately uh, vindicated, ransomed, and brought back to our uh, righteous authority so that we can take our enemies down and, as the scriptures say, bind their kings with chains. We want the kings. Because that's who's really at the forefront of all of this mischief. All right. And some you see outright and they put them on the news and you may hear about certain families. All right. But there's people we have no idea and we'll, you know, who, who the hell they are and what they're doing who are in power. OK. So the way that Esau would pay. All right. As we just read is through the destruction of Babylon the Great. OK, which right after John, the revelator, says this, this saying for the church that this man is going to pay and he's going into captivity. He speaks about another beast coming up out of the earth. All right. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. All right. And he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon. OK, and that's America. And we always go into that. Now, to give you understanding on why it's another beast, okay, it's basically the revival of Rome, all right, the, 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 the fulfillment of it. The fulfillment of the revival of Rome comes through Babylon, the great America, all right, and tied to it is the NATO and the EU, all right? Now, to give understanding of this, uh, when you go back to Daniel 7, it says, and this I saw, all right, in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. Now, we know this is speaking of the Roman Empire. <clears throat> and it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and break in pieces, and stampled the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. Now, we already broke this down. This is speaking of the Roman Empire, how their military came to destroy and conquer, and they had great might, okay? And um, they had a, a, a beast system tied to it. Vassals made them a powerhouse. Rome was an idea. You didn't have to be in Rome, all right, to be in Rome. The mindset and idea of Rome, just like America, is throughout the earth, all right? So verse 8, we know that's Rome. Verse 8 says, and I considered the horns, and there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. All right? And that's the three horns. It's speaking of the Spanish, the French, and the British. The little horn, okay, who came after they were plucked up is Babylon the Great. This is the revival of... Of Rome, and it's likened to a little horn. You see, this is the revival of that fourth beast. You see, it's the fourth beast in, in, in seven. 
Okay, and then it's eight, okay, the revival of that beast. You see, and in behold, in this horn were the eyes like the eyes of a man, okay, and a mouth speaking great things. So they're but men, but boasting in God like capabilities and have a plan of controlling, you know, everything, rewriting the, the, the code of life and starting all over and recreating, you know, a paradise on earth through technology. And we don't need the most high. We don't need his son. We can bring immortality via carnal means. Okay. But if you notice what happens next in Daniel's vision, all right, is that the most high sets judgment. Okay. And I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow. And this is the most high God, Yahweh, whose garments was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. And his throne was like a fiery flame and his wheels as a burning fire. This is the ancient of days, the most high God, Yahweh himself, omnipotent. Okay. And he has allowed his left hand to rule through Esau, Edom. He's, he's allowed the heathen to rule in the earth. But now he's getting ready to set judgment, okay? The le as the left hand has fulfilled its role, he's getting ready to set judgment and establish his right hand, which is Yahweh Shai. He's setting judgment, okay? He's setting judgment. And Daniel, he, he he's looking... All right. And he beheld the voice of the great words, which the horn spake Babylon, the great. OK, bringing back the energy of Rome, boasting pride. OK, uh, their science. And I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given into the burning flame. So through this system. All right. Is the end of Esau's power structure is the end of all heathen rulership. And the Lord sets up. His only begotten son. Okay. Real quick. Verse 13. Daniel 7 and 13. The son of man presented. And I saw in the night visions. And behold. One like the son of man. Came with the clouds of heaven. Behold I come with clouds. Okay. And he said when he comes back. Also those who pierced him are going to see him. And that was that Roman. All right. Uh, uh, officer. You see that Roman system is what he's returning to. Okay. <laughs> it says so one like the son of man came in the clouds and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him so he's getting ready to be sent by the most high God to set up what judgment and there was given unto him glory dominion and a kingdom that all people and nations and languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and this kingdom is that which shall not be destroyed. So the kingdom of heaven is going to replace this wicked, all right, system that's based upon blasphemy, all right, where Esau is ruling over all of the people, you know, Yahweh Shai, okay, the son of David, okay, the son of the Most High God himself is going to be sent to establish order on earth and establish the tabernacle of David, all right? which is the 144,000, the 12 at the head of that. And after them, after that 144, you have the large multitude. Okay, under Yahweh Shah, that's going to be first fruit spirits to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. Okay, so the importance of that is that we're living in that system that brings that kingdom. All right, as we just saw Daniel's vision if we're going according to Daniel's vision then the revival of this fourth beast okay coming into the to the earth ruling leads to the kingdom so as we get into this fourth beast all right and the revival of it the beast from the earth in Revelation 13 that's what that is that's that little horn that came from the fourth all right and we know that according to second Edris, okay 11 and 39 okay it says in the fourth verse 39 art thou not it that remainest of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my world 
that the end of their times might come through them. See, and the fourth overcame, all right, all the beasts that were passed. So this is uh, uh, the Roman Empire. But again, this is the last of the beast that's going to reign in his world. Okay? This is why <laughs> John ensured us that he that leadeth into captivity, he that did all of his wickedness is going to go into captivity. And he that killed it with the sword, all right, which Esau was blessed with the sword, he's going he's, he going to be taken down by the sword. Okay? And 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 even greater as the heavenly father establishes us in our new bodies. <clears throat> so, Revelation 13 and 11, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Okay, and uh, uh, the, the revival of Rome. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, all right? And we always go into that, how that here in America you have, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans, you know, these two opposing sides, which, you know, people fall into these, you know, categories by linking onto one, and they're being led, you know, um, to ultimately a system to where they have no rights, okay, and won't have anything and be happy, okay? And back in ancient Rome, you had the plebeians and the patricians, okay? So these two horns present themselves as, as a lamb, as if they're for the people, but they're leading you to a, a system to where they're going to have your actual soul, <laughs> all right? In, in, in a mass enslavement and he spake as a dragon it goes back to Draco an Athenians Athens Greece lawgiver who was known for his harsh laws all right meaning he passed some very harsh laws and harsh laws are coming into the earth they're talking about making a, th a thousand dollar fine if you have particular talking points this is what's coming and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. See? And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, going back to the ancient Roman Empire, and calls it the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Whose deadly wound was healed? Okay, the the the, the Roman Empire via the Renaissance period. Okay, so again, the, the ideologies and everything that stem from the Renaissance, all right, it's all complete through America, all right, NATO and the EU. Okay, this is how the first beast, all right, is living again through America because he what? Exercise it. Let's look at the word exercise it. He exercises all the power, okay. Exercise it. Strong's G forty one sixty, Poyeo, Poyeo. Okay, bring forth, <laughs> perform, to produce, construct, to put forth, constitute, appoint, celebrate. They're celebrating Rome through these establishments. Okay. There you go, to perform the authors of a thing. Now let's go back here. So he exercised, all right, all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. All right, so people are wondering after the beast. And let's look up this word worship. Okay. Because that comes with all of the philosophies, the, the the political, you know, field. Our people are down for it. The feminism, you know, the uh, the the reversing of roles and establishing of idol worship instead of the, you know, the establishment of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, the Christmas where you're worshiping this false, you know, uh, Tammuz, which means sprout. All right, which that's the sun, you know, Satan, you know, all, all manner of uh, of garbage, man. Okay, and and our people, Proskuneo, 
okay, kiss the hand towards and tokens of reverence. All right, among the Orientals, especially of the Persians, fall on the knees to touch the ground with the forehead as an expression of profound reverence. And people reverence this technology. People reverence this age, this medicine, this this new way. They they people have no regard for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh through this system. They're worshiping. All right, the first beast. They're they're really worshiping. All right, that Roman way of life. They they're bowing to it. All right, the 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 doctrine, the gospel, the 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 Bible. None of that matters in this world. Okay, people have pretty much. <laughs> all right, uh, uh, expressed their respect or made supplication to these philosophies. The Big Bang, okay, and all of that. You see? Now, let's read it again. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and calls it the earth and them that dwell therein, all right, to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed, all right? Rome, taking all the, 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 the science, the, the everything, the medicine, all of these things go back to Rome. You see, and he do it great wonders so that he make it fire to come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. All right. And that's NATO. All right. The, 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 uh, the American military, you know, the, the, the pretty much the bombing, destroying, devouring. You know, which Esau was blessed with the sword, right? When you go into the scriptures, Esau would be blessed with the sword. So with that, he's making what fire to come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. People are seeing this. OK, if you try to leave away from his dollar, he bomb your ass. All right. And verse 14 said and deceive it them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, all right, which had the wound by a sword and did live, all right, recreating man in their image, okay? And in Rome, pretty much, you had to bow, all right, to the emperors, to the, the, the their gods, their idols, okay? Now, this is where we are right now. OK, and those miracles are done via his technology. OK. Via uh, his science, what he's able to do, his weaponry, his military, his his might. OK, he's done miracles. Let's look up that word miracles. And he's definitely deceived every damn body. Everything's fake. Okay. Say Mayan. A sign, a mark, that by which a person or thing is distinguished from others and is known. So you know, all right, that this is this man ruling by the things he's doing and by the power he has. A sign, prodigy, uh, portent, i.e., an unusual occurrence. All right. And through his. Industrial revolutions, which was off of the back of slavery. <laughs> All right. And, you know, um, he's been able to uh, bring forth, you know, things, you know, the earth ain't never saw. All right. But it's in a left hand sense, you know, transcending the common course of nature. OK, he, he's making fruits. All right. He's talking about uh, transhumanism. He's transcending Okay, the, 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 the common course of nature. Is that not exactly what this man is doing on the earth? Okay, he, he's, he, he's transcending nature. He's making a new way. Okay, so this man has, has done miracles. Okay, now when you look up this word image, let's get that word. All right, icon, <laughs> icon, all 
right? The word means Im- image, figure, likeness. He's trying to make you in his likeness. You know, he's basically using the impulsive beast, you know, nature of man, all right, to, you know, in lust and desires and, you know, um, witchcraft to ultimately gain control of man. Okay? Here you go. The image of one, all right, in, in whom the likeness of anything is seen, all right, just like, you know, the, the angels, the Allahayim, made man in their likeness. Okay, and that was ultimately speaking of the chosen man, you know, Adam, who had Seth, all right, and before that, Abel, and so forth. Okay, but he is trying to recreate creation in his 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 image. All right, which is an image the heavenly Father despises. Okay, so icon. All right, an image, the word that involves the ideas of representation and manifestation. Okay, so you're you're witnessing the, the the a representation of Rome, a manifestation of Rome. All right, Ico to be like and the people. All right, as the scriptures say, let's get that in the book of uh, Sirach, the tenth chapter. Sirach, the tenth chapter, and the second verse. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of a city is, such are all they that dwell therein. So the people have become like Esau, proud, silly, all right, uh, uh, covetous. Okay, uh, the, 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 they basically doing as thou wilt, impulsive. And that's what the number six is associated with, the beast like impulsive qualities, you know, the flesh, lust. See, and that's ultimately the 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 the, the power he'll have is through, you know, this earth. He will never have power over the uh, the heavenly body. Okay, but right here, there you go. So he's he's made man in his image. This system has brought forth a very, very dark, backwards, wayward way in the earth. That's it's all predicated upon evil. Okay, and it's all in the image of Rome. He's reestablished Rome. All right, verse fifteen, and he had power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast that they should be killed. So how has this beast given life to the image of ancient Rome? Okay, which remember the dragon was ancient Rome, gave the beast its power. Okay, so the, the, the this beast that is, you know, headed by the power of Rome, how has it been given power in these times? And how is it both speaking and, all right, and living right now. Well, all right, let's just go to civil law, all right? Civil law is a legal system originating in mainland Europe and adopted in much of the world. The civil law system is intellectualized within the framework of Roman law, okay? Everything goes back to Rome, all right? Now, to solidify that, We'll play <laughs> this documentary that I've been playing for years, but it brings the point home. But is that all Rome had to offer? Typical perceptions of Rome include constant gladiator games, wine field orgies, and prosperity among all. These are all dramatized visions of a glorious cult culture that was far more similar to our own than it was different. Their influence and contributions can be felt even today. By examining the history and culture of ancient Rome, we're able to see that not all of Rome died in its collapse. Every day, we're surrounded by common symbols which owe their meaning and lasting appeal to the Romans. For instance, 
The great seal of the United States shows an eagle clutching arrows in one leg and an olive branch in the other. Imagery such as this is usually interpreted as uniquely American. The eagle, however, was not always a symbol for American nationalism. In Roman mythology, the eagle was the companion of the chief god Jupiter, and it was used widely throughout Rome adorning statues and temples. Its religious associations would have been widely known throughout the Roman world. It was also used by the military, which carried standards with the bird of Jupiter mounted on top. In recent history, others have used the eagle to create a memorable link with the ancient past. Napoleon Bonaparte's Grand Army used it to decorate their standards, banners, and uniforms. It was also incorporated into the emblem of the consulate after Napoleon declared himself first consul, a title also derived from ancient Rome. During World War II, the Nazis held party rallies and demonstrations while carrying Roman standards which were topped with the eagle. At the same time, fascist dictator Benito Mussolini, who envisioned Italy becoming a new Rome, also used ancient Roman symbols, including the Fasces. It was a tool carried by Roman civil servants known as lictors in order to preserve the peace or hand out punishment. Even the word fascism is derived from the ancient Roman tool. It also appears in numerous forms throughout the United States representing strength or justice. The olive branch was also used in everyday life by the Romans. Olives were a precious commodity in the ancient world despite the amount of labor required to produce them. Extending an olive branch to an enemy, therefore, became known as a symbol offering peace, as they could only be grown during peacetime. The olive branch appears on the official seal of the president, which has been in use since 1880, and on the United Nations flag. In the mid-first century BC, Julius Caesar replaced the old Roman calendar, which had 355 days, with a new one, reorganized with 365 days with one leap year every four years. The renovated Julian calendar is essentially identical to the calendar system used today. Originally, the older style calendar put the beginning of the new year in March, at the start of spring. Julius Caesar had the new year coincide with the 1st of January. Most of the names for the months are derived from the original Roman names as well. January, from Janus, god of doorways and beginnings. February is derived from the Roman festival of Februa. March is the month of Mars, the god of war. April comes from the Roman month Aprilis. May for the Roman Maya, goddess of spring. June is named after the queen of the gods, Juno. July gets its name from Julius Caesar, who rededicated the month after himself. August was renamed in the same fashion after Augustus, first emperor of Rome. And September, October, November, and December simply mean the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th month. Certain religious festivals from ancient Rome were replaced with Christian holidays as paganism declined under alternate names but with similar meaning. A Roman festival known as Lupercalia celebrated fertility and health. It was held February 15th and is the modern equivalent of St. Valentine's Day. Often used as a symbol for the modern holiday is the chubby winged child known as Cupid, which was the Roman god of erotic love. In December, Romans would honor the god Saturn during the week-long celebration of Saturnalia. This was held at the end of the month and is believed to be the basis for celebrating Christmas during this time. One of Rome's often forgotten but inescapable contributions is their language. Although it is not spoken directly, the majority of words in the English language, at least 60% and probably higher, are derived from Latin. Many common names such as Marcus or Julia are Latin words. Even the name America is taken from a Latinized version of Amerigo. See, Amerigo Vespucci. That's where America was named after. The person it was named for. Other languages spoken around the world also developed from Latin. They're known collectively as the Romance languages. The main ones include Spanish, Portuguese, French, and Italian. Including English-speaking countries, it's estimated that over one billion people today speak a language which traces its roots to Latin. Another important contribution from ancient Rome in use today is their alphabet. Numerous writing systems around the world, English included, base their alphabet on the Latin characters. With the exception of J, U, and W, the capital letters of the English alphabet are identical. 
Besides the basis for languages, Latin is also used in the Linnaeus taxonomy system, developed by Carl Linnaeus in the 18th century to classify and arrange organisms. Thanks to Linnaeus and Latin, humans are scientifically classified as Homo sapiens. Many legal terms in use today, such as habeas corpus, in absentia, stare decisis, and others are taken directly from Latin. At the heart of Rome was its government. During the Republic era, a code of laws known as the Twelve Tables were created, which protected the rights of all citizens. Roman law would eventually spread and become the foundation for numerous law systems throughout the world. Because of the 6th century Emperor Justinian, who collected all works of law and assembled them in a single doctrine, Roman law was preserved until modern day. In one form or another, it was the basis for most of the European law systems until the end of the 18th century, and even the English common law, which helped influence the U.S. Constitution, borrowed from the ancient laws of Rome. Even in America, founding fathers like Thomas Jefferson and John Adams hung on every word of Roman writers like Sallust, Tacitus, and Cicero. And some of these uh, historians wrote about Yahweh Shai. But, I mean, you can clearly see how Rome, <laughs> the image of Rome is speaking in living today. It's not a picture of Caesar Borgir. Okay? So, so worshiping the image, okay, is different from receiving the mark. Worshiping, worshiping the image, you can repent from that. But to take the mark is to, to pretty much say, you are my owner. Okay? And you're going to have a choice. See, it's either that or death. People, you know, what if, you know, what if they force it? No, you're going to have a choice. And if you're not down with taking it or a system that would even consider it, you're going to be a part of a particular group. All right. And laws are going to be put into the earth to where you can be hauled off and, you know, uh, beheaded. And the bottom line is, what are you at this point seeing with this world? has to offer and what they're bringing forth. You know, why does it even, you know, you have to, 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 to ultimately love not this life unto the death. And the Lord has shown us more than enough, all right, to understand the, the that it's no such thing as death. And we live with Yahweh Shai when he returns. The scriptures talks about the 144, their works do follow them. Because the 144, all right, the ones who are on the planet Earth singing his new song, they're speaking against this image. As a matter of fact, we're showing you the image of the beast, but don't you know the Lord despises that image? What's that, Psalm 73? Psalms chapter 73 and 20 as a dream when one awakens so O Lord when thou awakest thou shalt despise their image so the Lord is not with the image of the beast he's not with these wicked uh, uh, ways and, and this wicked impulsive destructive way of life that's being established into the earth so he's sending his prophets out as you Edomites are trying to establish your image and make a name for yourselves Okay, and set up your standard in the planet Earth. Make yourself an ensign. As a matter of fact, let's get that. It's in the Psalms. I know it's in the book of Psalms. Basically, they're trying to establish their ensign. No, that ain't it. There we go. Psalm 74 and 4. Thine enemies roar in the midst of thy congregations. They set up their ensigns for signs. Okay. Now, who's the true ensign? All right. <laughs> Isaiah 11 and 10. In that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign for the people. And to it shall the Gentiles seek 
right? The Israelite foreigners in his rest shall be glorious. All right, when you look up this word ensign, and that's basically talking about the restore remnant. As Esau is trying to establish his ensign, the ensign we're looking to, all right, which the word uh, ensign is nasa. All right, something lifted up, the banner of Yahweh Bashmi Shai. Okay? Standard signal. All right? And we're looking to Yahweh Shai, and they're trying to set up their standard. Okay? <laughs> That's why Davos means son of David. They're trying to what? Usurp the authority of Yahweh Bashmi Shai. See? And establish their image. But we can clearly see how this image of the beast that did had a wound and live ancient Rome is living again right now and speaking through the laws, through the policies, through the Olympics, through the sports, through the very energy. OK, the religion which forwards all of those idols of ancient Rome. Considering every character they wrote were studying, George Washington was considered the Cincinnati of America for his reluctance to hold power and his patriotism for his country. Because of this, many statues were created with Washington dressed in Roman style clothing. Many of the buildings of ancient Rome have been lost to time, but were left with a small piece of their majesty. One of the most influential pieces we have is the Pantheon, temple which was dedicated to all the gods. Its design, which is quite different than other temples in the Roman world due to its square column front and large dome interior, has been replicated in almost every state capitol building in America, including the capitol in Wisconsin. Trajan was centuries ahead of his time when he built what is considered the first multi-story shopping mall. It was equipped with the ancient equivalent of all the stores we might find in a modern mall. Shopping malls. Sports fans as well owe some debt Coliseums. to the Romans for their architectural endeavors. Modern stadiums, which itself is a Latin word, are modeled after amphitheaters, a must in any great Roman town. The most famous of them is undoubtedly the Colosseum. Romans also loved going to the races at the Circus Maximus, a large oval track used for chariot racing. The Romans, like audiences today, enjoyed a good spectacle, often betting on their favorite gladiator or charioteer. There were also inventions like the Hypocaust system, which circulated warm air through chambers beneath flooring. It was especially useful in bathhouses where heated floors were a necessity. This subfloor heating... Bathhouses? ...is similar to a system in homes today centuries after it was first conceived. The empire eventually came to an end, destroyed by barbarians. Ancient Rome exists now only in its legacy. As the saying goes, not only do all roads lead to Rome, but most of our culture does as well. The people of Rome were very similar to the people of the world today. They worked the land, loved to be entertained, and were extremely resourceful and creative. The people in the cities created a melting pot of ethnicities, each contributing a bit of their heritage to the Roman way of life. There you go, the mother of all harlots. So going back here, okay, Revelation 13 and 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak Okay, let's look up this word speak. Okay, how is it speaking? Okay, through everything you, you what do you hear? The laws that are being passed. Okay, it, it's all it, it's all predicated upon ancient Roman Roman law. La eo, la eo, to utter a voice, to use a tongue, the faculty of speech. Okay, to use one in order to declare one's mind. So you're 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 seeing the mind of Rome. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's get Psalm seventy three again. Psalm 
Psalm 73 and 9. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walk it through the earth. Their philosophies. Okay. Which that's what it said Satan would do after he was loosed out of his, his prison. So the worshiping of the image aspect. Okay. As you can see here, he's caused the, the, the image to speak and live. And that as many as would not worship the image, if you didn't bow, as the scriptures say, he, the Lord has reserved 7,000 which have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. All right, which is a, a complete number. Okay, so as many as would not worship the image, they should be killed. Okay, and that's happened, you know, uh, uh, over time. You know, the uh, people who try to leave the dollar, <laughs> you know, you, you was bombed. Okay. That word also, okay, that word also, all right, to kill, all right, because laws are going to be passed, <laughs> that if you have our mindset, it's still going to be legal to kill you, okay? But it's also to separate, local separation, all right, uh, sec separation, a distance. John saw this social distancing. All right, all right, where the fellowship or separation of one thing from another, which a union of fellowship is destroyed, and we saw that, and we see that coming with this system. If you don't have particular things, if you don't stand for uh, particular things, you don't allow particular things into you. Okay, you can be separated, and eventually killed. For not bowing to the image, not worshiping the image. So worshiping the image is basically taking on this do as thou wilt, you know, Roman, you know, the politics, democracy as a whole, feminism, you know, uh, uh, the society standard on gender roles, family structure, pagan holidays. Okay. <laughs> and see, those are things you can repent from. But see, most people really are wondering after the beast and they don't see no other way out. They, they, they think this is it. They think he's God. They think that this is the, the only way a kingdom can ever be ran, the, the, the greatest kingdom ever. All right. The thought of a God, the thought of a kingdom outside of this doesn't exist in their mind because they're drunk. So next, after he does that, you know, which the, the, the medical field is a part of that, you know, the worship and the image, you're going to have to do particular things which you're bowing to their gods and idols when you do those things see and the elect ain't gonna bow see the elect have the mindset all right and they're saying basically if you worship all right the beast and his image all right which is predicated upon ancient rome and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. All right. So worshiping the beast in his image is separate from receiving a mark. And see, this is something these guys never break down because with that mark, it's going to distinguish and change the way you buy and sell. All right. And most people are going to get it in their hand. All right. But people are going to also be getting it in their foreheads. All right. People with ailments. Okay. And we're going to get into all of that real quick, but, you know, uh, Revelation 20 and 4, and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of the Most High and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads and their hands. Okay, so if the, 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 the mark is a mere philosophy, which now they want to throw in, well, uh, yeah, the, 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 it is a chip too, but it ain't here yet and it may come. Nah, man, y'all wasn't saying that the, the chip exists. Y'all mocked the chip. Okay? So the, the worship in the image is the doctrines and philosophies, the religions, the political system, the military, all of that. That's the image of the image of ancient Rome. The the sword. See, but to, to receive the mark is to to ultimately accept him as your God. 
to willingly say, you are my God. I belong to you. I want to be recreated in your image. You see? So after he's pretty much wore everybody out and set up systems on earth to where you're separated if you don't worship, people get put to death. You're starting to see all of these things happen. He's going to cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a haragma in their right hand or in their foreheads, which we always go into this. And I'm just doing this for those who may have never saw. We go into this all the time, but it's a part of the new song. So, all right, who's ever telling the truth should be talking about this all the time anyway. But that word mark, haragma, okay, is an imprinted mark. A badge for the followers of the anti-Messiah. Mark branded up on horses for ownership. A thing carved, sculpture, graven image, an adulterous image. Something carnal. All right. And the proof is when you go to the uh, book, the book of Acts 17 and 29, it says, For as much then as we are offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is likened to gold or silver or stone or graven art, all right, and man's device. So the the mark is something physical, okay, that will be in people's hand or in their forehead, okay? And that will be the new means of buying and selling, which the digital currency is here. The, the, The infrastructure for that system is already here. And Crown Royale 2019... All right. Was the means of them setting up a system like this. Okay. And if you don't have this mark. So the system that's going to lead to the end will be the system that brought this forth. Okay. That had and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And see, if you have that mark, you've taken on his name. His number is upon you. He's he he's altered. He's changed. Who he he's basically made you, and recreated you for his purpose. You're programmed now for his 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 way. He's he you basically got a patent on you. <laughs> his name is on you. He's put his stamp on you. You <laughs> you've entered into a covenant with him. See. Here is wisdom. Let him that understand it count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Esau, Edom, the man of sin, and his number is 666. And we we always go into the chai side stigma aspect, okay, which ultimately this 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 system is to make man a track, trackable human resource, a, a, a device, make you the device, make you a, a barcode. Okay, a scannable just product, and that's fulfilled in chai side stigma, which stigma, all right, we know is an ancient system, all right, to where men, all right, branded their particular uh, master's name on them. So with all of this technology and everything that we see being brought forth before us, okay, again, Let's just go to it in Galatians to bring up the point because you may have people who didn't see the last videos because we go into this all the time. But we're going to get the uh, the word mark all right, to show you what stigma means. Chai Sai Stigma 666 Stigma, a mark pricked or branded onto the body. All right. In ancient oriental usage, slaves bore the... Name or the stamp of their master, commander, branded or prick cut into their bodies to indicate what master or general they belong to. And they were even in some of these devotees stamped themselves. All right. And we see that happening now. So if that which is then is now. OK, we, we see this 666 system. All right. Being implemented into the earth, man. We clearly see it. So. That's the breakdown. I mean, we always go into it and there's more, but this system will be the system that brought forth. Okay. um, 
this evil, wicked device, this plan, these miracles, you know, try to totally X out the most high. But again, as we always go into Revelation 14, the testimony against it, and then Revelation 15, victory over it all. And that's where we headed. Stay on the right path. Hopefully I will edify it. Any questions, ask on the comment board. Shalom.